all your wonderful faces. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. So folks, welcome to our day of the cent. Democracy versus TTIP. My name is Sakina. I'm an avid TTIP campaigner. Um, I work at Keep RNHS Public and I'm a proud activist at Global Justice Now. Thank you for being here. My name is Ed, I'm an activist with Global Justice Now. Today is the International Day of Action against free trade agreements like TTIP. Ooh, TTIP. TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. A deal that in reality has very little to do with trade and an awful lot to do with undermining our democracy and handing control over our lives and our societies to corporations. And it's not just TTIP. We've got loads of these ugly, undemocratic trade deals happening all over the world, like TISA, CETA, TPP. So today, we stand in solidarity with people all around the world fighting these illegitimate and undemocratic trade deals. We stand with ordinary citizens standing up for their rights against the corporate elites. We're in solidarity today with people taking over 500 actions around the world. Yay! From 500! About 500. 750! 750! 750 and growing! Right? Any advance? <laughs> uh, there are actions in Manchester, Glasgow, Berlin, Brussels, Helsinki, Stockholm, Quito, Jakarta, Islamabad, <laughs> Tokyo, all around the world, people are taking action today and we are with them. Yeah. And they are with us as we do exactly what the forces behind TTIP don't want us to do. We're going to enact democracy. We're going to talk about TTIP because they don't want us to talk about TTIP. They don't even want us to know about TTIP. So we're going to start today with an open participatory assembly where all of us can contribute and express together what we care about, why we're angry about TTIP, and what we're going to do about it. And to start the conversation off, I'm extremely pleased and excited to welcome on John Hillary, who's the Executive Director of War on One, and a leading voice in the campaign against TTIP. Thank you, John. Thank you so much, Sakina. It's fantastic to be here in the sunshine in Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush, now the epicenter of this World Day of Action, looking at all of these trade deals and saying no. And this is a measure, it's a measure of public anger that we are being sold down the river by our politicians, by the corporate elites that link with them in Brussels and Westminster and across the world. And if you're tweeting and looking out in terms of the, the, the Twitter sphere and Facebook and that, you may have been looking at hashtag A18DOA, April the 18th Day of Action. And what's interesting there is you can see every second a new story coming up from across Europe. TTIP is now trending in countries across Europe for us saying no, we don't want anything to do with these ghastly deals. But what's also interesting is that this voice is getting through. The European Trade Commissioner, Cecilia Malmström, she's also come out and she's also been tweeting back at us saying, I'm so glad there's going to be this frank debate. And she wants it to be based on facts, not myths. Well, here are some facts, Cecilia Malmström. Well, I don't think you're very good at recognising facts when they come up to, to see you. First fact, the people of Europe want nothing to do with your trade policy. We want nothing to do with TTIP. We want nothing to do with the EU-Canada deal, CETA. And we want nothing to do with the Trade and Services Agreement, TISA. So your entire policy is completely against our wishes. And she knows this. We met with her. Three of us met with the head of the European Commission's trade team back in February. And we said, look at your consultation on the most outrageous bit of TTIP, the Investor State Dispute Settlement Mechanism, where US corporations will get the unique right to be able to sue us in corporate courts when they feel their profits are under threat. And we said to her, you did the consultation, you got 150,000 responses, and all of them said we don't want ISDS and we don't want TTIP. 
In fact, the only ones which didn't say that were your puppet masters, the corporate lobbyists in Brussels, and there's only a couple of hundred of them. So what do you say to that fact, Cecilia Malmström? And what did she say to us? She replied, I don't take my mandate from the European people. It doesn't make any difference how many of you say no. I take my mandate from the business and the political elites. And that's unacceptable and that shows the rotten state of democracy in the European Union. But I think she's got another thing coming because there are some other facts here. The second fact, despite them telling us day after day that our NHS is somehow safe from TTIP, we know for a fact, because her own negotiators have told us, that TTIP is absolutely going to apply to health services, to medical services, to education services, to water, to rail, to post, to financial services, to housing. In fact, anything that you thought would be better off back in public hands, they've got other plans for. They're saying we want to privatise it, and we want to lock it into a trade deal so you can never get it back. So the second fact is, we reject your privatisation of our public services. We want to back in public hands and do a public good. Yeah. And the third fact, and this links with the fact that today the 18th of April is one day after the 17th of April, which is the International Day of Peasant Farming. Small farmers around the world rising up and saying, we don't want to have to compete in this capitalist nightmare of production and consumption and distribution of food as if it was just a commodity rather than the very stuff we live off and we want to eat. And so that's why also we're saying today, get your hands off our food standards. Because we have seen that TTIP is a direct threat to our food standards. And all of the myths and the propaganda coming out of Brussels will not change that fact. The fact is that the European Union has said we need to treat US exports of meat and other foods as equivalent to the things that we produce here. Doesn't matter about the fact that they're riddled with genetically modified ingredients. Doesn't matter about the fact that the meats are pumped up with growth hormones and antibiotics. Doesn't matter about the fact that the chickens are all doused in chlorine or lactic acid. Who cares? You're going to eat them because that's what free trade is all about. So our next fact, Cecilia Malmström, is we don't want anything to do with that either. We will decide what food we grow, what food we consume, and how we do it, and we want nothing to do with your free trade agenda which tells us we can't do that. But the final reason, the final reason that we're here today on the 18th of April is because on the 22nd it's Earth Day. And we need to remember that TTIP and all these free trade deals are a disaster for the environment. If we need to leave 80% of fossil fuels in the ground, then tell me why the European Union is pressing for an energy cha chapter in TTIP which will open the floodgates of oil and gas coming across the Atlantic and condemn us to a future of fossil fuel dependency. And our fact to Cecilia Malmström is to say, we want nothing to do with that. We want to have an ecologically sustainable future which hands on our planet to future generations in as decent a state as we can manage. And not something which just puts us and the planet second to corporate greed and big business. So I'm really pleased that we're here and that we are saying no to TTIP, no to CETA, no to TTIP, no to a whole range of these vile acronyms across the world. But we're here in a political moment as well. We're here just in front of the general election in this country. And we're seeing the strength of our movement being replayed back to us because every single party manifesto has had to include a section on TTIP. They realise that there is massive anger across the country about this gulf between our popular opinion and the representation that we're being denied by our politicians. And what we've done, if you go to the War on Want website, you'll see we've taken the chunks out of all of these different manifestos and put them on our website so you can read them and compare them. And what's interesting is, again, you can see them backing down. We are winning in this fight. You can see that Labour has already had to say we're worried about things. 
Yes, they say, we're still pro TTIP, and God knows why they're pro TTIP, when it's going to lead to the loss of at least one million jobs. You see, the Liberal Democrats, they didn't even get the memo. The Lib Dems are still using statistics that somehow the UK economy is going to grow by £10 billion as a result of TTIP. Well, actually, even the Tories dropped that one a year ago, and they told us they didn't believe in it, but they obviously didn't tell their friends the Liberal Democrats, and that's, I think, that's, as it has been for the whole of the last five years. But anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> what you see is in story after story, and party after party, a recognition that people want nothing to do with TTIP. But unfortunately, of the three biggest parties in this country, only, well, none of them have actually said anything positive about TTIP for us. They've all said they're pro it. And it's, that's why we need to have new forms of action, new forms of protest, and new forms of political representation to challenge them. <laughs> we have the Occupy Democracy Movement coming out, as you know, from May Day all the way through to the election and past, saying we don't believe in our political system anymore. We want to have some form of genuine representation from below. I'm really glad that we're having this meeting here again to say that the people of this country do not agree with the politicians that are selling us down the river. We will also be out on May Day, the 1st of May, to say no to this further attack on trade union rights and working people's standards. And I'm really glad as well to see the ATL banners behind us here, one of the unions which has joined the No TTIP Coalition. We can win this battle. We can win this battle because we've won before. We fought off these same powers in the 90s when they tried to introduce them through the multilateral agreement on investment. We fought them off in the noughties where they tried to bring them back through the World Trade Organization. Every time we fought back, we have won. But we can only do that when we maintain this strong, vibrant, cross-national movement of dissent and resistance. I'm really thrilled to be here today. Together, we will win this battle. Let's stay strong. Thank you. Yes. Hi guys, it's Obi of Finance Network. Thank Please you, uh, keep tweeting this. Back soon.